certified project management professional, our next speaker also holds an MBA in strategic management and his extensive experience includes helping organizations deploy and adopt complex project and portfolio program systems and practices. He is recognized worldwide as an expert of project and portfolio management systems, technologies and business practices, and is here today to talk about using SharePoint specifically for project management. So please join me in welcoming Tim Cermak. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Mark, for that, uh, the this, this storytelling that very insightful. It'll get everybody kind of thinking about uh, what's happening out there in the, in the platform. Also, as I get my notes up and we get up and running here, um, thank you to uh, Chris Dooley and to John for helping to set this up um, as uh, someone who you know, has uh, some level of demands to try to get out here. Uh, it's not an easy thing pulling something like this together, I can assure you. So thank you guys for this. Thank you, Bamboo for inviting us here. My name is Tim Cermak. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about project management. Let me get this thing going here. So we're going to talk about project management. Essentially, what, 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 what caught me this morning, we talk about collaboration is the way uh, to business success. Certainly, we're focusing on collaboration. Uh, so, so we're kind of getting away from some of the more technical components. We're talking about more of that, uh, that experience. But what caught my attention was the word business, because that's really what this is about. Uh, Mark and some, some other conversations start to allude to uh, SharePoint and that whole sense of collaboration is now evolving to a business platform. So, so it's actually starting to, to become critical inside organizations. So if we talk about managing the business, actually what is appealing to me is talking about managing the business from a project manager perspective. So who in here are project managers? If you just simply raise your hand, project managers, okay, great. Uh, certified project manager, PMP or print certification, good, we got a couple of them now. Now who in here don't consider them project managers but work on assignments and tasks and uh, assign it out and, and that type of thing? Pretty much everybody, right? So, so what, what is now one of the most common platforms or technologies to, to, that project managers use for project management? Can anybody guess? And if you know the answer, because this has been presented a little bit before, then, then you have to bite your tongue a little bit. But can anybody just tell me what, what is the product that's most often used for project management? Excel. Excel. That's three. That's number three. Anybody else? Email. Email. Exactly. Email is the most common product used to manage projects. It's talking, it's communicating, right? It's assigning, it's, it's working with information. It's a 1973 piece of technology that's, that's now managing projects and programs worldwide. So let's talk about the business. Let's talk about where we're at. I start to pull some information from Gart Gartner, the research firm, and uh, this is over the last couple of years. So we're talking about IT and technology but we're really talking about the business, the business platform. Some of these words have been put out there. Some of these conversations have been put out there. Uh, on the left is this year's ranking from Gartner, from CIOs and research studies of the CIOs' top priorities. And the, the top five actually, or the top four, moved up from previous years, analytics and BI, uh, mobile technologies, collaboration and workflow technologies, but there's other studies that are now starting to present some interesting information, and it's coming from the chief financial officer. And this is where we start to talk about, uh, according to this, you know, there's, there's a, a recent trend of over 11% upgrade or, or increase in the chief financial officers now starting to make decisions about IT investments. Okay? And, and there's other trends starting to present themselves between the, the information officer and the financial officer. And the financial officer essentially was the one that, that holds the budget, so the one that's going to write the check at the end of the day. So everything eventually is going to roll up to that role. And the trend is explaining that they're not seeing IT and the CIO as that long-term business partner the way things are going. They're seeing that the IT or the information management part of the business is focused on technology and is starting to compromise their visibility to the business, the users. 
So let's try to decompose that and talk about why do we think that's happening and then what can we do and start taking steps today. So really, the revolution is here. We specifically use the word revolution as opposed to evolution, which is kind of the more calmer, gentler, we, we got things in place. No, there's a change happening. The, the business is changing, and we're seeing it in our personal lives between Facebook and the other more social aspects of the business. And for years, as we worked with Microsoft, they asked their partners, what are those trends? How, how do we adjust the technology to meet some of these, these trends. We need to tell our customers. They say people are searching for information. They're communicating, and it's happening outside of the structure that we're putting together. So how do we capture that? So we come up with what we're calling the PMOYT. It's a project management on your terms. So what we're doing is we're seeing that the trend is when investments will be made, that have to be marked against tracks, against, against metrics in the business from the financial side. You have to allow organizations and people within the organizations to do what they do best. You can't restrict them. So the BYOD, bring your own device. How many people in here are starting to use their devices beyond a PC or a laptop to remain connected? Phone, tablets, okay? On-demand project metadata. Essentially, the, people want to know right now what's happening with their, with their work environment. They don't want to get the email saying, we've got a problem, we've got to meet. They want to be able to drill in, get to, and do more with less. They can't be compromised by the different systems. And that social engagement, they're able to acquire much more information at a faster rate, but it's happening outside of what the IT structure may be able to provide them. So they're gonna work around the system. And interesting note, I, 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 I mentioned her throughout my, my presentations, my wife, who has, who's as far away from business and SharePoint and Microsoft as she can get other than married to me. Um, but over the, over the years, the last few years, um, she essentially know very little even watches the news or, or, or that. She gets her Facebook updates. She gets alerts sent to her phone about articles, and she knows sometimes before I do the, s the score of Michigan State game and that type of thing. Before I log on and see it, someone posts it, oh, they score another touchdown. She says, oh, it looks like State's losing. Really? You got that information like that that fast? And that's what's happening, right? So today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about project management, project management on your terms. Uh, we're going to look at project management maturity, integrating with Microsoft Project and with SharePoint, uh, the word empowering, empowering a project team for sharing that relevant information. We're going to look at how we can present that information in a, in a business intelligence style uh, and, 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 and focus on accessing and, and gaining visibility to that information. Uh, I'm the managing partner with uh, Innovative E. Uh, my boss back there, Mike, is, is here. Um, we concentrate on project and program management uh, with the SharePoint platform specifically to help organizations gain visibility to what's happening inside the organization. Now, we also have uh, back by Mike, who's, who's right back there, we have some flyers. There's an upcoming session. Uh, Mark mentioned Ducks, who's also my colleague. Um, you can sign up to be online or to attend it. And so if you're interested, we can pass out some flyers. This is also my contact information. Uh, certainly email or uh, direct message me. There's uh, many, many ways you can get a hold of me. So today, we're going to effectively initiate and plan a project. We're going to facilitate some team collaboration. We're going to do some tracking and reporting, and then some Q&A. So project management information systems. Some of you raised your hand, said you're a certified project manager. Many of you do project management. Do you remember this on the test, the PMIS? Raise your hand if you remember PMIS on the test. One. OK, a few. Project management information system. It's really it's, it's the structure that's in place to allow you to do your project management from beginning to end, from intake to rationalizing and planning and managing, controlling, and then delivering some sort of output. The key, though, project management is that it is a single point of time. It's got a beginning and the end. It's not ongoing. Project processes are ongoing, but the actual initiatives have a unique point in time. And realistically, what project projects are designed to do is to help influence change. 
So if something's not happening right, we have to get it back on track, launch a new product, do some investigation, uh, recruiting efforts. All of these are campaigns that are going to be put in place that have a start and finish with a unique budget and allow change inside an organization to continue. So we talk about how ready organizations are to start doing this. And the first thing organizations want to do is to start wanting to put in technology in place. We've got SharePoint. We can do project management at SharePoint. They have project, Microsoft Project, Project Server. Now we have all these things. We're rolling on out. And what happens? No one's using it. It's not getting done. Are we seeing better performance on our projects? Why? How come this isn't happening? Because we have to also look at there's the process or the structure within an organization, and then there's the people side. People have to know what they're going to do and then, and then adopt that. They have to agree that this is what they're going to do. Otherwise, they're going to work around the system. So we have to call this the tilt today. We have to concentrate not only on the technical platform, but also the culture and the processes within an organization. So we're going to dive into a, a demonstration, get into SharePoint. We're actually going to look at building a project management information system. So I kind of, because of some time purposes, I kind of created some, um, some preliminary, but we're, we're going to pretend that we're going to do uh, a cafe. Uh, we're using uh, some, some of my uh, colleagues' uh, approach. Uh, he's, a, he's a foodie, likes you know, coffee, and does a lot of travel. So uh, we're, we're going to pretend that we're, we're starting these, these little coffee shops, little caf cafes around the world. And uh, so this, this is all project on your term. So uh, essentially what we would do is, is you start a new, a new project in SharePoint. It's a preloaded template that has all of your documents and, uh, and information management already preloaded. Easy for anybody to just start, use, click, and, and, and move ahead. So along the side here, we have our documents. What we're going to do is we're going to build a, build a schedule. So I'm assuming since some people raise their hands, project managers, that you work with a project management tool other than SharePoint, correct? Microsoft Project? Or are we, are we all just the, the de facto email? <laughs> So we're going to use Microsoft Project. So essentially what you do is you go ahead and you say, okay, so there's, there's a template. So we have some level of standardization. We're going to go ahead and open up a project plan. So here's my project plan. It's preloaded with information. Simply what I do is I go in, I say, okay, uh, I'm going to start this project today. Okay. And it's going to go ahead and move it. Now, quickly what we're going to see is you'll notice that my start date is now 3-5. So this is where we want to deliver, right? Starting today, got roughly six months. Okay, gonna go ahead and we're going to push this back out to our, our site. Now once this loads, I go back into my SharePoint site And there's my project tasks. So now what I've done is I've created a project schedule and I have a project site where I can start to plan, I can collect information, I can share information, I can invite other people, other groups inside and outside my organization to participate with me in this planning exercise. I can also make sure that I have some level of control and understanding over my project. So the biggest thing is, uh, for example, who's going to do the work, right? Typically, we determine what we're going to do. We send out an email, you know, Bob or accounting department. I need to have this person, this person. Let me know. Can we meet? Well, we're not going to do email. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sign here. And uh, first off, I'll sign myself. There. And let's go ahead and give myself a whole bunch of tasks. Okay. What are the features you're using here? Is this just, is this just projects in SharePoint? Yes. Everybody hear that question? This is SharePoint and Microsoft Project Professional. I'm syncing up with them. So let's go ahead and synchronize. Give the system a minute to think. And you notice right here what happened is, there we go. So now, I, now I've appeared on my schedule. So not only do I have a SharePoint site with my tasks, my, the people that are going to work on it, I can go ahead and I can send an email if I wish and say, can you please go to this site? 
I've got a new project, you have some assignments, um, I can go ahead and send them a link to the document, I can manage everything here, but what we want to do is we want to say, okay, uh, since I'm the resource, go to my resource sheet, we'll notice that uh, I can control my costs, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm not going to be available um, for the next few weeks. So let's go ahead and starting today, the date of the project, till Halloween, I am out. Okay, let's go back to my Gantt chart. Scroll to my task, and you notice here what's happened is I've now started to slip my project. Because we know that this resource is no longer available, we can go ahead and schedule all we want. We can add that information to our library. We can tell the whole world this is going to happen, but if that person's not available, the work is not going to get done. So I need to have a reflection of reality here. More importantly, once I synchronize this, and then I go to my online schedule, we're going to start to see this shift as well. So you notice that now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using all, a lot more of the technology without following a highly rigid process and approach. I'm not limited by I don't know Microsoft Project or I have to use Excel or email. I'm using what is just simply going to work. I need to synchronize my schedule with my resources. I need to pu push them out to a site. I need to understand where I have any kind of conflicts. Is this Working for anybody? Is it any any questions at this point? I'll go ahead and stop and ask. I know we've got a little bit of a time constraint. Any feedback? Who's done this? Who's doing this today? One person. Who wants to do this? Take advantage of the technology. This only works for tasks that are not subtasks, right? Like if you have subtasks in project, they won't come up. The subtasks do work. In SharePoint, you have to actually open them and drill down, or you can put a, I think it's a, a content query to be able to roll it up. In 2013, that changed, by the way. So now you can actually see that cascade. Um, or if you have Project Server. It's basically SharePoint designed for projects and would show you the, the work breakdown. Any other questions? So. Why is it important that I use, say, Microsoft Project? Well, not only do I have a lot more of my scheduling capabilities, and I can allow others to also participate to more advanced project information, but I can control that information. So now I have a little level of change control, change management once I post this. If my costs start to run a little bit longer, a little bit higher, if I have delays, if I have changes, I can go ahead and track those in the schedule and use the SharePoint site with the other document management capabilities to make sure I have full control over this. And you notice it took us a few minutes just to set this up in order to do this. Okay, uh, here we go. Sorry, without a mouse, I'm kind of scrolling around. So facilitating team collaboration. What we've done is we present this information, shared the information. We're following a process, a process that may be governed by your organization, both from a technical side as well as a business unit side. If there's a process of how you initiate and ask for funding, if there's a way to say I need to have certain people in order to, to help me on my projects, all of that can be adopted into here. But now we need to actually communicate effectively. So now we're actually going to start adding in some of the elements of your Excel and your Word. So back to my site. What we have is we have uh, in our document management library, we have change impact analysis worksheets. We have, we can do change control. Uh, we can do budgetary uh, components. But if I do have a change, what I can use is I can use Word that's stored in my SharePoint site. And if I want, I can go ahead and ask, uh, say, one of my colleagues who's online to help, to log in, 
and help editing, co-authoring with this document if I have a change. I'm not calling them, I'm not sending out an email, I'm online, I have a change, ask someone, can you please go in there and, and make a, a, a change to this and save it. And we've got version control, we can compare those changes, we're using all the advantages out of Word. We're not constricting ourselves to what SharePoint does and doesn't do or what Microsoft Project does or doesn't do, we're using Word. But let's just say now for, um, again, project on your terms, outside of SharePoint, outside of project altogether, you have people that are now using Excel. They're, they, they're comfortable with Excel, they like to manage their projects and their costs using Excel. So that's fine, let's just uh, add some information into, into Excel. We're, remember we're building a cafeteria, so we need to have equipment, machines, chairs, everything, we put some costs in here. So what I've done is I've, I put these in, we can even put some costs, let's say this is uh, 400, uh, two, oops, 200, et cetera, you get the point. Uh, good coffee machine, probably $2,000, add that in. Now we have this button here. Does anybody use this with Excel? A couple people use it. It's, it's been available since 2007. So you can go out and you can download it, make it available. So what I can do if I publish this, is I can grab my site, oh. so right from Excel, go out to my site, and see, scrolling down, expenses, there we go. Now I'll just put my expenses right from Excel out of my SharePoint site. And the beauty about this is if everybody is using Excel, and typically your, your bookkeeper's accounting finance department, that's the world that they live in. So you're not gonna ask them to go to Microsoft Project, you may not even ask them to go out to a SharePoint site. Say so use Excel publish it out here. If they have changes, they can go ahead and they can go out to the site and make changes, or they can go back into their Excel file and make changes in Excel and update this. Does anybody find this valuable? Good, who's gonna go out and try it today, later today or tomorrow? Excellent, again, my contact information, if you have any questions, we can point you to where you can find this, download this, this is good stuff. So we've done a information management working with Word. We've worked with our cost information. We're using SharePoint as that management platform to control that information. We're using Microsoft Project to manage the dependencies and the sequencing of our activities. So now what can we really do with this? Let this load. So let's go ahead and edit this guy. And let's add some fun to this. Business data. Why don't we put in a chart. Anybody, anybody like Graphics, sure. charting graphics, actually, uh, I'll add in, uh, pick the wrong one here. There we go, chart web part. There we go. So by simply adding a chart, we can customize our chart. It was a bar chart. Let's go in here. Let's select, uh, say, a, a pie chart. You notice that we've got, this is all, all SharePoint. Going in here, we can do a nice 3D pie chart. Say good. We can format it, 2D, 3D. Done. 
Okay, good. So you're probably asking, okay, Tim, this looks cool. What does this mean? Well, it means that if I go into my chart, I can now connect it to, remember that list that we created from Excel, where the accounting department, all they're using is Excel? Well, I wanna go ahead and I wanna, I wanna add some, some business intelligence. I wanna, I wanna be able to say, okay, uh, expenses, good. Next, finish up. I can make all my corrections there. So now on my project management information system site, as this syncs, I've now added a pie chart with the data. And again, you, you can go as deep and detailed as you want with the business intelligence. This is just simply exposing information. This is cost information is tied to my schedule somehow, but not necessarily linked to my project plan, project site. I'm allowing the finance team to work on projects in a project role on, on their terms. I'm allowing my team members who have to sh share information, provide me updates, um, co-author with me to work with what they're most comfortable with, yet I still can maintain integrity and credibility with my project information. So one last thing here. If I go to, let's go to another project that's already, already been running. This is my, uh, my Detroit project. And uh, let's say I want to go ahead and export my, my project. Remember we did a sync from project to, to SharePoint. I want to go ahead and export this out to Excel. Okay. So now what I've done is I've taken that project information from a project plan, synchronize it with, with our site, and now I'm gonna bring it down into Excel and I'm gonna to start to do everything I, I can possibly do with Excel charting. Pivot analysis, charts, graphs, I can invite others, I can go into a link meeting and say, please, can you work with me on this, share my screen with them, send them an alert that they'll get on their mobile phone, say, I need some help with this, push this back up. So we're not limited to just one kind of business intelligence, we can work across the platform. One final thing here, in Microsoft Project. Let's say uh, I, I like being in Project, but uh, I also need to do some reports. So now we have some reports out of the box. Resource usage. And go ahead and click on this. Opens up Excel. Opens up Visio. We talked about, we didn't talk about Visio, but going back to my Detroit Project, Detroit Home. Coming from Detroit, automotive, they like a lot of flow charts. So now we're working with Visio online. I need to tell my team how this project is going to unfold, how we're gonna control it, where we're at in the stage. We're in the front end, we're in the middle, we're controlling, we're recovering. We go here, what are those next steps? Go to document library XYZ, change management, all right here. Any questions so far? Y'all got this? Awfully quiet. So this is my contact information. Now, when we were talking to John and Chris, they also asked uh, if, if we have a few minutes, I'm sure, do we have a minute or two? Um, we can go into 2013. I'm gonna switch on over, see if I can log into that real quick. Sure, cross-functional training. Um, when we work with organizations, our education is consultative role-based training. So what you saw here to learn this business platform and some of the related functionality for a finance department would require different level of education training than someone in HR. Because they have in HR possibly some more resource management and capacity planning requirements where finance has more cost management. So the training is dependent upon that role in the organization and what kind of project information they're, they're, they're required to, to edit or just simply view. Yep. 
Exactly. It's adoption. And that's what the whole project management on your terms is about, is, is this is about the business. The business is, is happening and will be required to happen. And rolling out new technology is a change. But we need to understand how impact to that culture is going to create some level of adoption and momentum. So you don't ask someone in accounting to learn Microsoft Project unless that is what their role requires, but you do require them to participate in a project information system in those processes. And if they use Excel, then set some standards and requirements around that use as the component in the project system. It's about the data. We have to use the data. I think one of the, one of the other speakers mentioned uh, the, the single source of information. It may roll up and be presented differently, but it's, it's all one source of the truth that we need to expose. All right, so let me, uh, let me see if I can't uh, click in real quick to 2013. I know it was giving me a little bit of time or push back on uh, logging in. Uh, let's see, where did I have it? There we go. Last attempt to see if it's going to let me in. Nope. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at it more. The, the important thing with that that I was going to show you is... Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, the key thing is there's things like what we talked about here, exposing information, there's visibility. So now activity in SharePoint can roll right into project and project server much easier, and, and we'll get into that. So, but, but thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, come see us in the back.